What do you want to be when you grew up? At this point in time, I want to be a YouTuber, but I've been ridiculed for this decision. Through the confusion of not knowing what it takes to be a YouTuber and how they actually make money, that alone has been a confusion for many and a down point for me being one, but the other part has been what is even the impact. See, for some reason, depending on what you want to do as a career for a job, it turns out that for people, it's important if your job makes an impact that affects others. If it doesn't, it's kind of devalued. And by extension, not only is that job devalued, but almost you connected to that passion, that career that you want to be a part of. And today we're going to talk about our roles as Christian. Hello, I'm Noah Price, your Christian Gamer. I love RPGs and JRPGs, but lately I've been playing other games. With the lead up to Baldur's Gate and, and well, as you're going to see footage of me actually playing Baldur's Gate, I've been enjoying D&D. And an important factor of D&D that everybody has probably known, whether from secondhand or even from playing, is that party composition is somewhat important. Now, luckily, I haven't been somebody who, when in a D&D group, has been the one where there was somebody actually pointing, like, hey, Hey, we need a healer. Hey, you have to be a healer. But like that alone is a factor of, hey, this role needs to be filled. And for this composition, we need a rounded fear for us to be able to have fun and work in this game. For Overwatch specifically, you have three specific roles that are clearly defined and rigided for what needs to be filled. A tank, a damage dealer, and a support. And on the flip side, you have on Pokemon Unite a more free-flowing style of, I don't know, you could try to run a game with all supports or a game with a bunch of just damage dealers. And so with this mindset, jumping into Baldur's Gates and getting excited and thinking about, ooh, what do I want as a party composition and even existing and enjoying Pokemon Unite and even playing a little bit of Overwatch, I've been in this realm of composition and, and filling your role, doing your duty, doing your job, and it reminded me a lot of Christians and what it means for us. For us growing up, it's sometimes hard to understand what you want to be and what is your purpose. But not only that, but the word purpose has a connecting factor of doing something, providing something. And I know for many, while I was attending Boys of Bible College, I know there's many people who were struggling with this idea of purpose. Now, this was in a Christian setting, so it was easy to, at the end of the day, kind of like look up and be like, you know what, God, I trust you. I know you have a purpose set aside. In the Bible, he it's clearly said that he has a purpose for us. And so it's easier for us to look at that and be like, you know what, I trust God that in the end of the day, he's gonna make it work. He's gonna put me where he wants me to be. It, it really is true. God wants to use us. He wants to use us people. He doesn't have to. It's clear that he does not need us. But from the very beginning, we see in the Bible, he has chosen humans to be used for his purpose. And as God wants to use us, we are united under one body. We're one entity, like-minded and conjoined. We see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. Just as a body... Though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body was not made up of one part, but of many. And the scripture does continue, it, 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 we didn't read all of it, but it does continue and talks about even the, the problem of not doing this, of, of thinking that, hey, only one part is necessary. I think a great way to look at this is if you look at a traditional church, it's easy to look at just the church and look at, oh, it's the pastor and that's the thing running the things. But there's so many layers and different parts moving in this organism, this ministry that God uses. There's people just helping out with flyers. There are people he helping out with backstages, with either equipment, making sure these are able to run smoothly. There's people who help out with setting up and putting out and like all these small little parts. It's easy to think, oh, well, the only one that's truly important is the pastor when that's not true at all. It requires everybody working together as one with a with a common goal to succeed in this ministry of sharing the gospel properly. 
Some of you might hear this and be like, oh, yeah, that's that makes sense. That's good. But how does that fit for me? I don't think I fit in with the idea. Like, I don't think I could be a pastor. And I guess I could pick up chairs. But is that really what God wants me to do? I do have these other passions. But I don't think God would really want to use them. I would say that's wrong. <laughs> God specifically wants to use you. He does. Not someone else. Not you pretending to be someone else. Someone more holy. God wants to use you. Still sticking in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we see earlier than what we read before in verses 4 through 7, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. We are all given different kind of parts, different kind of abilities from God. He is the uniter. He unites us, brings us together, keeps us connected, even though we are different. We are like-minded. It comes from him. It's not from us deep down. Like deep down, we have what we have from him. He empowers us, but we still have that uniqueness and God wants to use that. And a great example that I personally learned about this was if you know, you might know if you follow my live streams over on Hero Scrub, but I mentioned that I have a reading plan that I do. I'm kind of like part of my routine is in the morning. I like to wake up early because then it's kind of my alone time that I can spend with God. It's, I spend time praying and I spend time reading the Bible. And so what I try to do is I read from the, from the beginning to the end because I think reading the whole scripture is important. And if I could speed up the process, I want to get to the point where I can know the full Bible more and more. That's the goal. So right now I'm in Exodus again and I read the scripture and it just, it punched me. It punched me hard and like, oh, God name drop these people because this is important. I'm reading a lot of scriptures, so I'm going to read a small section. Just read this chapter and, and chapters around it. It's cru very is crucial, but I'm just going to read the small snippet because it hits the point on the head. Exodus 31, 2 through 7, God put in place a select part of his people who had skills to make the tabernacle and the holy place. Right now, Moses is at Mount Sinai and he is talking with God face to face. This is when God literally tells him about the Ten Commandments and he writes it on the stone. Like that moment. It's pretty iconic and pretty important for God's people because we're getting to learn more of how what's the right way to live. We're learning more about the law. And with this, we're getting set up of how the Israelites are going to be living moving forward. Well, the priest will actually go into the tent and then get to sacrifice specifically to God and... Uh, all the sacrifice, all of this is going on at this moment, and there's these elements that need to be built, these specific things that God wants built, like a lampshade, like literally spot for sacrificing, and as we all know, <laughs> the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant. This thing had to be built by somebody, and God had a specific plan for how it was going to build, but who was going to build it? Well, his people. This wasn't going to be outsourced by somebody. God set forth people specifically to build this. This was their way to serve God. And the fact that God shot out two names specifically is important here. It's crucial. It truly highlights the fact that these two people are important, but God has set them apart for this goal, for this duty that is easy to forget by our standards. We always look at Moses and, and other people, etc., like Abraham, people who got to meet with God and talked on God's behalf, even people who are pastors like, like Peter, we remember them, but we don't remember some of the smaller factors, people who served in other roles, even though it's crucial. I could end here and just say, hey, so yes, analyze yourself and try to be calm and remain in how does God want to use me now? There might be ways you are serving right now, and that's amazing. That's good. But another thing that I want to hint at and kind of, kind of throw your way as something to keep in mind is that what does God want to use you in the future? I think it's pretty important for everybody that the only thing that's truly constant in life is Jesus Christ, baby. <laughs> Besides that, change is constant. Being able to adapt and, and change is important. It's good. It's crucial to surviving. Being able to change, whether it's just implementing, in this case, new ministries is crucial. It's ways to adapt to provide a need to somebody who needs it. So being in a spot to where you can be open to that change is important. Sometimes we want something so hard that we're just stuck in our, our feet and we just want that. Or in some regards, we hate what we are doing right now. We despise it and we kind of feel like I'm just stuck in this spot. 
God loves to open up new opportunities to people, to his people who want to serve him. So spending some time praying and having faith in him is a good way. And I think it's important for us to keep in mind of the possible changes in the future, to being open to opportunities that come your way and from not being so dreadful and looking only at the negative in the situation you're in. Looking on the bright side like, you know what? This might be a tough situation, a tough ministry that I'm a part of right now, but knowing that, hey, this might not be forever. So I'm going to trust God right now and I'm going to put my full effort into it right now and keep in mind that there could be other opportunities later that God provides me. Of course, I'm using scripture for this, obviously. I mean, we see this with Paul specifically. In Philippians 1, 12 through 30, we have, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Sometimes our opportunities and where we get put into, we, we don't understand what's the purpose of it. But keeping that mindset of trusting God and our success that God is going to use us no matter what is important. It's crucial to allowing God to do so. We don't want to be in a situation where what Paul could have done is looked at, why am I in prison? This is awful. This is terrible. And just be down in the dumps. Instead, he looked at the bright side and saw where God could use him. And that's, that's powerful. Thank you guys for watching so much. If you don't mind, please subscribe if this video was awesome to you. If it helped you, if you like this content, I'm going to pro provide more. But the other thing is also I am playing Baldur's Gate more. So if you want to follow me on this journey, I do plan to cover it here on this channel with a big video. So if you want to follow that journey live, <laughs> check out your scrub. That's it. All right. Jesus loves you. Bye. The distance, baby. Let's go. <laughs> It, it never gets old. It's good. Every single time. All right. And then let's go here.